Okay, so I'm just going to give you a quick run through of this lesson two in the IGC history, China conflict, crisis, and change scheme of work. Uh, there's your quick start guide at the beginning, just so you know what you need. And start off with the usual uh, format for my opening screen, the settler for my students. As they come in, there's a numeracy task, a literacy task, and some thought questions. And then I like to always fill that up with a context screen, uh, only because I feel history is, you know, as, as, as you all know, history is, yes, good analysis, thinking skills, etc. But it's also cracking narrative. And uh, I think if you deny a history teacher the chance to tell a good story, then uh, you know, that's, just, that's just not on. So this is your opportunity to set the scene, set the narrative, set the hook, get the students uh, involved, get them to know what's going on. If you are dull and boring, you've got a chance to wake them up with a quiz quiz trade activities shortly after. Uh, the resources for that are in the end of the PowerPoint. They can then consolidate that knowledge with a quick spiral diagram or list. Uh, of the reasons for the Boxer Rebellion, and then we can talk about them in more detail just to make sure the students have got the content down in enough detail. Um, and a quick shout out for my local history, the uh, Ransoms and Rapier Tractor Boys of Ipswich built the first China railway, which I think is quite cool. Right, so newsroom activity, the Boxer Rebellion itself. To do uh, to complete this, they have they have got this template here. Obviously, you don't have to have this template, but I find that especially for certain groups, this is quite useful. So you can get them that, get them working in groups, and then you've got four kind of interjections here by uh, sort of news flashes, and at your discretion, you can release that information to them as they complete those newspaper articles and draw pictures to illustrate the narrative of the Boxer Rebellion. Once that's complete, you can look at some real life history, some, some real source material there that you can look through as a challenge activity. That's very well, I mean, I like the source, very vivid, well worth reading through. Then we've got your hot seat plenary. Okay, that's always good fun. Then all the resources that you need are attached there. Uh, in addition, we've got a support activity for some students that might prefer this close uh, sort of exercise. Uh, that's always good to, to have on hand for some students, uh, even for the high level students, just a quick look at this, just to make sure they really understand and consolidate what they have learned. Uh, because the China course as well comes with so many new words and such a crazy vocabulary half the time I'm simply praying I'm pronouncing it right. Um, but, you know, it's really fascinating stuff. So I actually, I love using these uh, glossary and keyword uh, sheets just to uh, get students to focus in on that one new word they might be struggling with. And, and you know, by the time they finish these exercises, they're pretty much pro at it. There's two support sheets there. And a cheeky little ad for the History Games on Wolsey Academy. Check them out if you have not done so already. Uh, there are 12 lessons currently in existence for the China Conflict and Crisis uh, module. And there's also a revision guide which covers the whole thing, all available on the TES and the website. Uh, and yeah, I hope that helps. Any questions, please do contact me via the Wolsey Academy website. I I'm a terrible speller and a very fast typer, so um, I do try and make sure there are no mistakes, but if you, if you do spot any, please, please let me know, or if I've uh, pronounced anything wrong, then let me know too as well. I'm always, uh, always up for learning. All right, hope it helps.